Using Maxwell Lord's powers, Eclipso is able to expand the man's telepathy across the world. The planet falls into chaos as people begin fighting in the streets. In DC, the Justice League does battle with the corrupted heroes. And Eclipso loves it all. He takes pleasure in the pain and suffering, and basks in the glow of chaos. Deadshot moves in, attacking Eclipso, but the villain grabs him, rips off his mask, and takes a look at what's inside. He sees the assassin's daughter and makes him realize that she's the only thing that holds him back. Without her, Lawton could kill without remorse. Eclipso declares this is an excellent plan and drops him. Deadshot gets up, corrupted, and vows he will kill everyone. This is fun! Eclipso looks for his next victim. He grabs Amanda Waller, saying he just adores her. She takes every worst thought she can imagine and puts them to good use. Nearby, Batman is saved from Wonder Woman by Killer Frost. The Eclipse would seem to suggest that the villain is weak to sunlight, and there's a walking, talking beacon of it right here. Superman asks if Caitlin can create a prism to focus Superman's energy, and she believes she can but it will drain her of her remaining power. Without absorbing more life force, she'll be tapped and exposed. They have another problem too, as most of the squad has now been corrupted. Batman, Frost, and Lobo are the last three standing, and the alien agrees to hold everyone off while they get the plan going. Caitlin creates the prism while Batman taunts Superman into attacking. He says that no matter what Kal-El does, he'll never be human. He knows it, Superman knows it, and so does his son. The light hits the prism, engulfing the corrupted heroes while Eclipso bursts into flames, but Caitlyn is drained and cannot sustain things much longer. Batman rushes to her and asks that the young woman use his life energy. It will kill him, but they have no choice. Suddenly, the Justice League and Suicide Squad surround them. The sunlight has freed the teams from Eclipso, and they offer their energy. Taking a little bit from each of them, Killer Frost regains her power when Eclipso strikes out, knocking out most of the heroes. The powerful villain attempts to corrupt Caitlyn, but she is able to resist him, and with Superman, they finally wipe Eclipso out. The day returns, and peace is restored throughout the world. As the dust settles, Caitlyn finds she is one of the last heroes still conscious. She thinks she might be dying, so Amanda Waller has a final order. Kill Maxwell Lord. Absorb his life force, so Killer Frost might live, and this dangerous man can finally be put down. She moves to do so, but after a moment's thought, declines. Instead, she tells Amanda Waller she quits before collapsing. Later, the teams recover. Everyone survived, and Caitlyn is feeling much better. She remarks that when Eclipso tried to control her, he wasn't able to find any fear to corrupt and draw out of her. In that moment, she didn't care if she lived or died. All she wanted to do was stop Eclipso. Maybe she belongs in the Suicide Squad after all. Superman says that what she did today wasn't suicide. It was sacrifice. Meanwhile, Batman and Waller talk. The Dark Knight has some conditions for all of this. He wants Caitlyn freed. She just put her life on the line and single-handedly saved the world. Call it time off for good behavior. Waller assumes that Batman just wants Frost for himself, and he says whether she agrees to work with him or not will be her choice. Amanda insists she's a killer and can't be trusted. Batman replies that she has the potential to be a real hero. He does believe that some villains can redeem themselves, and is that not the point of Task Force X? Begrudgingly, Batman admits he's starting to see the point of the Suicide Squad, and says there might actually be room in this world for both of their teams. Amanda is amazed, Batman confessing he was wrong. For that, it's worth it. He can have Killer Frost. Sooner or later, Batman will realize the best place for the villain is with Amanda anyways. Later, as Lobo prepares to leave the planet, he is greeted by Batman. The main man admits that the Dark Knight did free him from Max's control, and that he owes the Vigilante a favor. Batman cashes that favor in immediately, saying he wants Lobo to join the Justice League. 
He's going to be on a new kind of team that Batman is putting together. A different one. Lobo says he isn't much of a team player, but the main man does keep his word. Max has been thinking about how he got here, how this all came together. Every part of his plan fell into place perfectly, right up until he found the Justice League and Suicide Squad working with each other to fight him. That was the first warning sign, and he now realizes this whole thing was a setup. Amanda Waller knew the Justice League would eventually come for her, so she steered Max into seizing the Eclipso Diamond and creating a common enemy for the two teams to fight. It all kind of worked perfectly. Checkmate now belongs to Waller, the Justice League knows about the Suicide Squad and has accepted it, and Maxwell Lord now belongs to her, safely drugged with blood thinners. If he uses his powers even once, he'll bleed to death before he gets to the door. Max points out that this plan had an awful lot of risk. It was dangerous, even reckless. Countless people have died all over the world, and there are still plenty of loose ends. The Emerald Empress is free, desperately searching for someone called Saturn Girl. Johnny Sorrow is gone, but someone's going to put on that mask sooner or later. Polaris is free, unstable, and dangerous, and Rustam will never stop hunting Amanda Waller. One way or another, the assassin will find a way to hurt her. And Eclipso may be gone, for now, but that diamond will turn up eventually. Max only has one question. She clearly has a plan for him, otherwise he would have been dead a long time ago. Amanda says Max is an unexpected bonus to come of all of this. But he will not be wasted, not on Task Force X, but he'd be perfect for Task Force 11. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Justice League vs Suicide Squad number 6. Alright, there we go. That's Justice League vs Suicide Squad. It's been a pretty solid series overall, a ton of fun, and on the whole, closes things out quite nicely. This comic is a lot of fun and still definitely worth reading. Justice League vs Suicide Squad was a classic superhero team face-off overall, and though this issue might resolve things rather quickly, I feel it was a worthy ending that closes the story while also setting up some new stories and directions for the rebirth in general. We had a lot of cool interactions between superpowers, and there's something to be said about the value of a comic simplicity. Yeah, it's a bit corny they all worked together to save the day, and that Caitlyn somehow overcame Eclipso's powers even though the comparatively weaker Maxwell Lord was able to control her earlier, but you know what? That's just superhero stuff, right? It's fine, it feels refreshing actually, because it feels more like the traditional superhero stories that we all grew up with. Overall, I think it was a pretty great direction for the meta-narrative as a whole, too. The new Justice League looks cool, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of them. And it's kind of a neat idea to do a Task Force 11 that sort of changes the meaning of Task Force X in a neat way. I don't know, I liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Also, if you like Comic Island, check out our Patreon page to have a say in the videos we make, and gain access to cool perks. Thanks for watching this video, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.